Hi, I'm Mitch, and due to popular demand, I'll be walking you through what I call the advanced joints section of assembly workbench. That is, the rack and pinion joint, the screw joint, the gears, and belt joints. I've got a half a mind to refer to these as third body joints, because the key to understanding them is realizing that each requires at least three parts in the assembly, and you must create a couple of the primary joints with the third body first in order for the advanced joints to work between the two bodies depicted in each of these icons. Let's start with the rack and pinion joint. You'll almost always be using gears when making these joints, but I thought it would be instructive to show that you don't have to create advanced parts before you start learning about advanced joints. So I've started as usual with a couple of simple parts a wide flat plate and a long cylinder. The wide flat plate is the grounded part and I've taken a chunk out of the cylinder so that it's easy to see when it's rotating. As usual it's helpful to read the drop down message for this joint which states that it links a part with a sliding joint with a part with a revolute joint. What's missing from this is that the slider and revolute joints need to be made between each of these parts and a third body. So my third part is a plate with a hole. I'll make the slider joint, eh, let's just say OK. I'll make the slider joint between the bottom edges of the wide flat plate and the plate with hole and I'll make my revolute joint between my cylinder and the hole. So first let's make that slider joint. We'll go here and I'll put it towards the back. Okay. And then I'll make my revolute joint between that so there and there. Okay. So now you can see that my third body slides along the base of the wide flat plate and this so this so this is my part with a slider joint and the cylinder rotates inside of the hole so this is my part with the revolute joint. Both these joints are made with my third body. So now my rack and pinion joint will be made between these two. Note the second half of the drop down tells me to select the same coordinate systems as the revolute and sliding joints. So I'll choose that and this front edge and create a rack and pinion. And I'm not going to change the pitch radius just yet. We'll hit OK. And then if I slide this along, nothing seems to happen. And I think that's because I, even though my pitch radius here says it's one millimeter, I didn't change it so it didn't register that I had chosen one. So let's just do that and now try this. And you can barely see that it's moving. You see that? Oh, there we go. So that is rotating. So let's make that pitch radius 10 millimeters to start. If I start over here, 
and move it across the plate the cylinder rotates one two full times as I get across the plate now if we make that half it rotates one two three four times and if I make it double it rotates about once but you notice that that's not exactly proportional it's not like I cut it in half and it rotated twice as much or that I doubled it and it rotated half as much So I think we have to add gears to really understand this pitch radius. But at least you can see that as the pitch radius goes up, it rotates slower. As the pitch radius goes down, it rotates less quickly. OK. Now let's move on to the screw joint. This is what you'd use to mate a nut and bolt if it was really critical to actually have the bolt screw into the nut precisely. I've already loaded in the same cylinder which is like my bolt and the plate with a hole which is like my nut the plate with a hole is grounded and in both these examples I've grounded the part that is not rotating so I double click on my assembly to get my options back here and we can see that the drop down menu guidance is almost identical to what it was for the rack and pinion but it still tells us which two primary joints we need to make. So what's the third body? In this case, it can literally just be a line. So I drew a line and saved it to its own FreeCAD standard file. We'll import that. And now the plan is, I'll add a slider joint between the line and the hole in my plate, so the line slides through the center of the hole. Then I'll add the revolute joint between the cylinder and the line, so the cylinder revolves around the line. Then I'll add the screw joint between the original two parts, the cylinder and the hole in the plate. So we take our line and our and we make a slider okay and then I'll select my cylinder and my line and I'll make my revolute joint And it's actually very useful to have that line sticking out on one side of the revolute joint. Let's just check to see if it's working. Yes, sir. OK. And now I can pull that line out, and it pulls my cylinder. And now if I make my uh, select my cylinder, and my circle and I make my screw joint so now here's a couple keys if I grab the cylinder and try to pull it through this hole it doesn't look like it's working first I want to change my pitch radius to something else just so it can see I changed it but it still doesn't seem to be working if I grab the cylinder so now I need to grab my line and bring it through and now it's working so change that pitch radius and grab the line and now if we want to see a little bit better what's happening let's bring my pitch radius way down and it seems to be rotating 
fairly quick. And now let's bring my pitch radius way up. And it's rotating slow. So a higher pitch radius is going to cause a slower rotation and a smaller pitch radius is going to cause a much faster rotation. And that pitch radius is ultimately going to be determined by the bolt that you're using. But at least you know higher means slower rotation um, and lower means faster rotation. On to the gears joint. And I'm going to insert, with the gears joint, I'm going to insert a plate with a hole twice. And I'm going to make that long cylinder both of my gears. So I'll add two of those. OK. Notice that the belt joint is a drop down for the gears joint. The only difference between these two is that the gears joint will cause the two cylinders to rotate in opposite directions, just like two gears would if they were directly engaged. And the belt joint will cause the two cylinders to rotate in the same direction, just like they would do if they were connected by a belt. Now, I don't want my rotating uh, pieces to be my fixed joint, so I added, so these are my first two bodies, and then I've added, I, I would consider my two plates with holes to be a third and fourth body, and I've grounded the body that doesn't, one of the bodies that doesn't rotate. So the first thing I'm going to do is fix these two plates together as if they're a single part. That doesn't really, that's not really required for either the gear or the belt joint. It's just that I happened to make a plate that I'm going to put both of these into out of two pieces. So you have to do one of those joints first. So I'll connect that. with that make it fixed and now it's as if this is a single third body okay and now our drop down tell tells us that we need to link two rotating gears together so the way I'm gonna make this a gear that rotates is to make a revolute joint between this and this and then another revolute joint between this and this and then we'll add the gears joint between these two so now you can see this one rotates and this one rotates but they don't rotate together So now I'll pick that and that, and we'll make a gears joint out of them. And again, it doesn't seem to work until Lufta. Notice there, I tried to move it, and I lost both of my listings. So now the gears joint isn't gonna isn't gonna be made because it doesn't have any parts here. So I've got to reselect them. And losing that is part of why I just make it. I don't change anything here, and I say OK. And then I come back into it. And you can see it's not quite working. What's our report view say? So it says my gear radius is 0. So it can't rotate with a gear radius of 0. So we've just got to go back to our gears and we'll adjust our radius a little bit and now we can oops you can kinda see where these things start if the each radius is the same then they should start, you can see that they're rotating in the opposite direction. If 
from each other and they rotate one to one so there's one rotation there's a second rotation so now let's say I make one of these radiuses radii half and you can see that one is rotating half as quickly as this one so this one takes two rotations to make that have one so that means this is the one with the four millimeter radius and this is the one with the eight millimeter radius and that also means that the actual radius of these cylinders doesn't matter what matters is the radius I claim in the joint dialog finally if I go to my drop down menu and I just switch this to belt now we can see that these rotate in the same direction it's a little bit tough to see there so let's maybe there they're the same spot so let's maybe make them the same radius and you can see as this one rotates around that one's rotating in the same direction so that's a belt and that's a screw excuse me that's a gear and that's it now surely it would be instructive to actually make some gears bolts and nuts and see if we can get the math just right on the pitches and the gear radii for some of these joints such that the threads and gear teeth line up but for now you know that you can use really simple geometries to gain some proficiency first I hope this was helpful